Horrible histories. Awful Egyptians. New from Nile Valley Games, it's the Egyptian <laughs> God Maker. <laughs> this is amazing, what a great game. <laughs> yeah, you score points by creating your own brand of new ancient Egyptian god. Hey, look, I got an aardvark's head, a dog's body, and a lizard's tail. I just created a brand new ancient Egyptian god, guys. <laughs> 20 points. No. <laughs> According to the rules, Papyrus, that's not a new one. That said, ancient Egyptian god of the desert. Zero points, bad luck, but let's keep playing. That definitely won't happen again. <laughs> OK, my turn. Let's go crazy. Oh. The crazier the combination, the more points you get. So I've got a crocodile's head, I've got a dog's body, and I've got hippo's legs. <laughs> 30 points. Yes. I'm going to call my brand new ancient Egyptian Sorry. god. Sorry. Says in the rules that that's Amet, the soul eater. Zero points again. What are the chances of that? <laughs> Maybe it's my turn. OK, fine. Uh, I'm going to have a lion's body, eagle's wings, and a woman's head. Anyone can see that's a sphinx. Oh. <laughs> OK, OK. How about this? Crocodile's tail. Lion's legs, hippo's head, surely. No, that's Taurat, goddess of fertility. Zero points. Right, so the score at the end is nil, nil, nil. Great. New from Nile Valley Games, it's the Egyptian Godmaker game where you can't actually score any points because any new combination you think of is almost certainly already a real Egyptian god. This is literally the worst game I've ever played. <laughs> As recommended by mummies everywhere. Those really were all ancient Egyptian gods. They had gods for everything. The god Shu was the god of wind. Now, he should have had the hind quarters of a hippo. <laughs> what? Not that sort of wind? Boring. <laughs> and almost as weird as Egyptian gods were Egyptian priests who used to perform religious magic. <laughs> Oh, in here, in here. Oh, thank goodness you're here. They've been out of control for hours. I'm hoping you can calm them down. They love magicians. Oh, well, no, I'm not actually a magician. I'm an ancient Egyptian priest. Well, do you do magic? Uh, yes, religious magic. <gasps> <laughs> Don't know why I'm laughing, it's the truth. Well, I'm sure that's just as good. Feel free to start whenever you're ready. Well, you know, I usually only perform for the pharaoh. But he's an honour, Dan, I'm not fussy. <laughs> I mean, how difficult can a children's party be? Leave it to me. Settle down, settle down. Ah. Settle down, settle down. <laughs> right, Charles, now I want to see some magic. Please! All right, now I'm going to start with a curse. Ooh. Behold, an ordinary white pot. Nothing unusual about it. You look inside, look inside. Don't touch it. <laughs> now then, you, sir, and give me the name of your ebony, of your ebony, of your ebony, of your ebony. 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 Give me the name of somebody you don't like. <laughs> now, take your time. It could be anyone. Could be a teacher. How about a teacher? Mr. Foster. Mr. Foster. It's come from Gloucester, by any chance. I <laughs> don't worry. I'm a professional. Mr. Foster. There, there you go. That's written on a white pot there. They're going to put it on the floor, like that. And, a uh, hey, presto, your enemy is crushed. I oh, thank you. Oh, thank you. Uh, <laughs> what are you doing? All right, we have a volunteer. Uh, you would like me to do the same for a uh, dad. No. OK, that's fine. Here no, you go. I don't want you putting a curse on anyone. Look, I've got a I've oh, got a headache, that's all right. I'll do some healing magic. Some healing magic on a headache, ladies and gentlemen. There we are. Have a whiff of this. Oh, what is that? It's dung. Oh. <laughs> that will lure the demon from inside your head. I haven't got a demon in my head. And the demon is gone. She is cured. I oh, thank you very much. Oh, right. I think you better leave. Oh, no, 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 don't worry. I know what's happening here. Spirit of the Chaos Serpent, Apep, is in the room. Did you invite him? And uh, he's making all the children restless. This has actually happened to me before. Oh, you surprised me. All right, calm down. Sit down, everyone. Calm down. I'm going to drive away the Chaos Serpent, all right? By putting this card with a demon's name on it into this bucket of wee. Oh, no, that's <laughs> it. Show's over. What's going on? I've had enough. Show's over. I'll finish. Go on, out you go. Yeah, can I just get my. Uh... Oh, that's it. Well, I was going to say fever. That'll do. Right, 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 New from Nile Valley Games, it's the Egyptian Godmaker Extreme Arcanata Limited Edition. Yes, with this new upgraded version, you can make any Egyptian god from the time of the pharaoh Arcanatan. This is even better than the last version. Yeah, that's not saying much. OK, I've got the top of the sun, the middle of the sun, and the bottom of the sun. That's exactly what I had. Me too. 
All pieces are the same. Yes, the Pharaoh Arkhanaten only believed in one god, so that's all you get. The Egyptian god maker, Extreme Arkhanaten Limited Edition. It's nil all again. This is rubbish. I hate it. I still like it. What's wrong with you, Trevor? The Egyptian god maker, Extreme Arkhanaten, is a limited edition because the Egyptian people hated him and his one god almost as much as you're going to hate this game. Rotten Romans. Dominus, tell me it's not true. It must be. The great Virgil must be dead. No, the gods would not rob us of Rome's greatest poet. Look around, my friend. The entire mansion is given over to a funeral the scale of which I have never seen. The gardens are filled with mourners. There's a full orchestra. And what of poor Virgil's wife? She must be devastated, losing her husband and about to lose her house. Her house? Yes. The government plan to confiscate all property belonging to rich people and give it to war veterans. She will lose this place for sure. Ah, you're forgetting the loophole. If there's a burial plot on the land, the government can't touch it. So, by being buried in his garden, Virgil has ensured that this mansion remains within the family. He always was so very considerate. What a writer. The greatest poet of our time. Don't forget my beautiful eyes. Ah! Oh! Oh! Virgil! We thought you were dead! No, don't think so. Then why is there a massive funeral taking place in your house? It's for Eddie. Eddie? A tragic loss and a great friend. Hours we'd spend together. Me watching him vomit up stomach acid over some discarded fruit or sitting on a dog poo in the local park. Well, he sounds charming. Oh, he was. I've even written a whole series of poems as a tribute to read out at the ceremony. Oh, it's the coffin. Um, this Eddie seems a little... Little. Oh, no! He was a strapping lad. You know, for a housefly. A housefly? Yes, the best one I ever met. I forgot it was an open casket. <laughs> this entire funeral is for a housefly. You didn't know him. And this has nothing to do with the government's plan to take the property from rich people. Yes, it's not this entire funeral, an elaborate con to have a burial plot on your land so the government can't take it. Well, it depends if you guys are going to go blabbing to any senators. We are senators, mate. Oh, Eddie! <laughs> he was like a brother to me. A tiny, tiny brother. <laughs> it's true. Roman poet Virgil rarely did host a lavish funeral for a fly as a cheeky way of stopping the government from giving his land to war veterans. I'm actually at a fly funeral now. He just doesn't know it yet. Ow! <laughs> This week on Historical Wife Swap, it's 1067, and an ordinary Anglo-Saxon couple are doing a wife swap with... ...some posh Normans who've recently invaded England. So how will the locals get on with the new arrivals? Ah, oh, Mrs. Pezant, what an honour this is for you to meet me. I am Baron Norman Longsword. Baron because I am a Baron, Norman because I am Norman, and Longsword because... ...well, I think you can work it out. Welcome to our village. You mean my village? William the Conqueror gave it to me with the surrounding land as a reward for helping him become the conqueror of England. What are you staring at? Your moustache is on your forehead. Oh, no, 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 no. We Normans like to shave our hair so it doesn't get caught up in the chain mail. We don't want to look stupid. Oh, no. You're still staring at it. It looks great. Thank you. So how are things getting on in the Anglo-Saxon house? Hello. You found us all right then? Ugh, it was easy. I just followed my nose. Ugh. Sorry, what are you staring at? Have I got some food in my moustache again? Oh, no, no. I just rubbed some deadly nightshade in my eyes. Why would you put poison in your eyes? To look good. The problem is I can't see so very well. Oh, oh. Oh, no. Meanwhile, Shay Baron Norman... Oh, I must say, your place is very impressive. It's not bad for temporary accommodation. Temporary? We just stuck it up here until we find somewhere to build a nice big castle with walls made of stone. <sighs> stone walls? Our men make ours with wood and pig poo. Well, don't worry. They'll soon know how to make walls of stone. They're going to build my castle. Hi. Oh, don't worry. We'll pay them. And then take the money back in tax. 
don't like these foreigners with their strange ways coming over here, stealing our lands. It's like we've been invaded. Oh, we have been invaded. Meanwhile, Lady Norman is trying to explain the basics of the Norman class system. William the Conqueror is at the top. Obviously. We Anglo-Saxons had a king once. Harold? Yes, yeah, sorry about the icing. Mm -hmm. Below him come the barons, like my husband. Just like our Anglo-Saxon earls? We. Oui. Below them come the knights, who fight for the barons. So they're a bit like King Harold's house calls? We. Oui. Below them come the serfs, the bottom. And where am I in all these? The serf. You do realise you just represented me with horse poo? Oui. It's charming, isn't it? Is it all right? Why? Well, it's, it turns out that everything I used to own is now owned by the Normans. My house, my livestock, my wife, even me. Uh, it makes me so angry. You know, I feel like vandalising some of their property. Come on. The wife swap is at an end, and it's time for the Normans and the Anglo-Saxons to settle their differences. Well, me and the missus have been thinking long and hard about this, and we were uh, wondering if you two would consider um, uninvading us. Well, funny you should say that, because we think a move would be a good idea. Oh, you do? <laughs> We've decided to flatten your slash my village and build our stone castle right here. So you need to move. Go and live in the forest or something? When you're not building our castle. Well, at least we can hunt in the forest. We've banned serfs from hunting, so no. It now carries the death penalty. <laughs> it has been lovely to meet you. I hope we can all get along. It's gonna be all right, yeah? It was the Normans who established the feudal system, which was to be the basis of society in the Middle Ages. At the bottom of the pecking order were the serfs, the peasants, then came the knights, then the barons, then the king, then on the very top, the rat. <laughs> One of those things isn't entirely accurate. <laughs> I'm not telling you which. Vile Victorians. Threepence! Threepence! Do I hear fourpence? Very good, sir. Four pits. Four pits. Going. Going. Gone. Sold to the man with the icicle on the end of his nose. There you go, mate. One pair of recently deceased comrades' boots. You won't be needing them anymore. That's great. I could do with a new pair. Right, OK. Item two. One very lovely warm shirt. One not very careful owner. Do I hear a penny? Uh, hang on. Hang on, lads, if I'm not much mistaken, looks like new supplies have just arrived. Oh, oh. My prayers have been answered. And my hands have frozen together. You hope not live, lads. It's the Duke of Cambridge. Mm -hmm. oh, these men, these... What on earth's going on here, then? Oh, we're selling off uh, the clothes of dead comrades, sir. We've run out of all our supplies, sir. There's no food, no coal. And the tents we've been using are so old, they were used at Battle of Waterloo 40 years ago. No, yeah, so I heard. That's why I brought 17 wagons piled high with provisions. <laughs> Thick tents, coal, warm clothes, tasty food, and plenty of fine wine. I hope you bought some gloves, sir. Of course I did. Yeah, Jenkins, here's that coat you wanted. Wilson, get this coal on the fire, will you? <laughs> what are you doing? These provisions aren't for you, they're for me. Oh, sorry. For you? 17 wagons for? Yes, just 17. I know how to pack light. And you all thought these were for you? <laughs> Wait till I tell the officers after our five-course meal in my nice warm tent. Ha! <laughs> Hilarious! <sighs> oh, that's not good. I can see you're all upset. I almost feel bad. I don't. I don't feel bad. And I must be able to spare something, I suppose. Ah! How about this bar of chockey? Oh, thank you very much, sir. This will come in very handy. We can use this for fuel. Six on fire, will you? Hey! We can cook up these frozen sausages! Um, I think those are my fingers, sir. These will be yours, then. The Crimean War was brutal and bloody, and pretty much the only good thing to come out of it was the fashion for furry faces. <laughs> When you're in the Crimean War, you probably don't have a razor, and you certainly don't have time to use it. So why not forget about shaving altogether? 
with the new Crimea No Blade No Shave solution. You don't shave close, and then you don't shave closer still. Leaving you with thick, bushy sideburns and a great big hairy moustache. It keeps you warm in the freezing Crimean winter, and it's a great place to store food. Mmm. Last night's chicken. Or maybe last week's beef. And if anyone says they don't like it, well, you may not have a razor, but you do have this razor-sharp sword. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no, 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 no. And when you finally get home after years of fighting, your wife will love it too. Who are you? Your husband. <coughs> Don't worry, it'll grow on her. It grew on me. So if you've got a lack of razors and a lack of time, maybe you should try the new Crimean No Blade No Shave Solution. The best a man can't get. Troublesome 20th century. There was a race between America and Russia, or the Soviet Union, as it was then known, to be the first to send a man into space. And no one was more determined to win that than the Soviet leader, Khrushchev. And this is our state-of-the-art computer. It's amazing how small they make them nowadays. Hmm? So tell me, comrade scientist, how was latest space mission? Pleased to announce, rocket Sputnik 9 makes successful orbit of Earth. This is cosmonaut we send on trip, Ivan Ivanovich. Congratulations! <laughs> Mwah. Mwah. Um, he is dummy. I knew that. We sent Ivan to test if rocket travels safe for human. Ha! So now Soviet Union wins space race and shows stupid Americans that they are dummies. I make joke. Oh! <laughs> Basta! So we now know a dummy can survive space flight. But is it possible for a living creature to also survive? Good question, O leader of the peoples. Yes, please. To test if rocket travels safe for a living creature, we need guinea pig. So we use guinea pig. Ah! Huh? Ow! Guinea pig return home safe. So we send a dog. Janushka, very well-trained dog. To get him to return from space, we simply say, down, boy. Leave the funnies to me, OK? Yes, I'm sorry. So now, Soviet Union is ready to beat United States <laughs> and be first country to send real human man into space. Yes, no. Uh, maybe one day. It's very dangerous. Would be like driving car off cliff. Uh, uh, no! I want to send man now into space, right now. Who is it going to be? Not you, Ivan Ivanovich. You have been already. Hmm? Groovy Creeks. Stupid deaths, stupid deaths. They're funny because they're true. Woo! Stupid deaths, stupid deaths. Hope next time it's not you. <laughs> what have you got then? What? Five aces? But that's impossible! Can't believe you cheated! Good job I've got six aces. <laughs> Loser! I keep telling you, nobody cheats death. When will you ever learn? Next! And you are... Empedocles, ancient Greek philosopher. Tell us a bit about your life then, Snorocles. Empedocles? Yeah, that's what I said. Well, I used to write my ideas in verse. Oh, good grief! What could be worse? Yes! Uh, sorry, couldn't resist. So, tell us a bit about your philosophy, then. Not if you're just going to take the mickey. I'm not! I'm genuinely interested! OK. Well, it's centred around the elements. Earth, air, fire and water. Oh, I'd listen to it all, if only it were shorter. <laughs> and again, yes, sir! Sorry, I'm done. No more rhymes. Cross my heart and hope to... well... Too late for that. Ancient Greek verse didn't even rhyme, actually. It was all about scansion, longer syllables and shorter syllables. Take the heroic hexameters of Homer's The Iliad, for example. Or, alternatively, we could not do that. Come on, get on with it. Just tell us your stupid death. Well, I wanted to prove to my followers that I was immortal. As you do. 
and I lived on the island of Sicily, which is famous for its volcano, Mount Etna. Ooh, I like the sound of this. I believed that if I was consumed by the fire of the volcano, that I would return as a god. So I jumped in. And did you come back as a god? Not yet. <laughs> oh, hey! Of being immortal, Empedocles did boast, but the stupid philosopher ended up toast! <laughs> <laughs> that is actually very good. I'm on fire! <laughs> you get it? Don't push it. You're through to the afterlife, mate. See you, crater! <laughs> Meaning later. I know. Next! Stupid death, stupid death. Hope next time it's not you! <laughs> To protect against a Persian invasion, lots of Greek cities formed an alliance together called the Delian League. Ladies and gentlemen, good evening. Welcome to Athens. Six red boxes, an awful lot of money. This is Delian or no Delian. Oh, yeah! I'm your host, Pericles. This is the game show that celebrates the Delian League of Greek city-states who have invested in a joint Greek army. Let's meet our first contestant. Hello, I'm Hephaecles from the Dodecanese Islands. <laughs> Hephaecles, what do you want to get out of tonight? I want to get my money back. We mm -hmm. all do. Yeah. We gave you all our money, Pericles, to fund a joint army to defend against a Persian attack, mm -hmm. and the Persians aren't attacking, so we'd like our money back, please. <laughs> Let's see what we can do. OK. All the money left from the Delian League treasury, which is all of you gathered here today, that has been put into these boxes. All you need to do is pick a box. So let's play Delian or no Delian. OK, uh, four's my lucky number, so I am going to start with four, please. Yes! Good luck, Hef. The city of Ephesus hopes you get your money back, as we hope to get ours back. Got a good feeling about this, and I'm always right. Oh. oh! Actually, thinking about it, it might have been a bad feeling, and I am usually wrong. It's I'm okay. sorry. It's all right. <sighs> okay, that that's bad luck. What we need to do now is we need to pick another box. Okay. One half. <sighs> yeah, it is. It's going to be you, Helen. You're a lovely man, Hephaecles. I just you. really hope this works out for you. Get your money back, and we all do too. Okay. Fingers crossed. Oh. oh. Okay. There can't be nothing in both of them. Wow. Sophia, love, what's in yours? Oh, what? Hermione. Well, let's see the last one. Awkward. We gave you everything. There can't be nothing left, Pericles. Yeah, you did. You gave us a fortune. We needed somewhere nice and safe to keep that. So we spent the money on a massive, ornate temple called the Parthenon. OK, great. <laughs> Let's go to the Parthenon and get it back, then. Yeah. Right, well, it's just that uh, we spent all the money building the Parthenon, so... <clears throat> you're, you're saying you spent all of our money building somewhere to keep all our money? Yes, sir. But that's OK that there's no money left, because you yourself said that there's no Persian invasion on the horizon. <laughs> so. Right there. <laughs> The banker, let's oh. see what he wants. Ah, now, it would appear that we have been invaded by Sparta. Oh, oh, oh great. So apparently, they feel threatened by our Delian League. I'll tell you what, though, now is a very good time to raise money for an army. Oh, you are kidding. We've got a nice big Parthenon to keep it in, so... Look at the time! Look at Rot that! No. Yeah, you better run! Horrible history.